This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. One of my good friends dropped by today with his brand new book, Pastor Max Licato. Yes, the Max Licato is sitting to my right. I've been blessed to become friends with him many, many years ago, and we've gotten to talk about... uh, his book of the year because he writes one about every 20 minutes and uh <laughs> so uh, it's easy if you just go with quantity and not quality Dave. <laughs> well i don't know with over 100 and what 30 million books sold now we'll go with the uh, quality aspect of that but uh max has got another book out and everything he writes i read he is an incredible person an incredible friend incredible man one of the top pastors in america today you can check out his website at max and of course he pastors over in san antonio Texas. The new book is You Were Made for This Moment, Courage for Today and Hope for Tomorrow. Almost like you wrote that during a pandemic. I did. I did. In fact, I I was um, going a different direction with a different sermon series at our church, and then the pandemic exploded. And and it was my turn to preach at the church. And I, I thought, boy, we've got to do something uh, on this whole theme of global calamity. And we had never studied through the book of Esther, the Old Testament book mm-hmm. of Esther. And I started reading through those nine chapters. And I thought, that's that's exactly what uh, what we need for this season. Of course, when I wrote it, Dave, I, I thought, well, the, by the time I finish the book, the pandemic will be over. Oh, mm-hmm. that gummit, here we still. <laughs> <laughs> well, still it is, and then it comes back. Yes, and then uh, it is, and then it comes back. But yeah. So, courage for today and hope for tomorrow. The, the story of Esther is so powerful. I made sure my daughters, when they were growing up, really got that story because A, she was beautiful, mm-hmm. and B, she was unbelievably courageous. Mm. Uh, put her life on the line mm-hmm. for others. Sure did. And uh, took a chance walking into the king. And so how did you weave that into this idea of dealing with worldwide mm-hmm. pandemic? Yeah. Comedy? Yeah. You, you, you know, the um, as you remember, Mordecai, the uncle, and Esther, his uh, niece, uh, were uh, in exile. They were three generations removed. We're fifth century B.C., by mm-hmm. the way, for your listeners, and uh, in the Persia, which our world today has nothing to compare with ancient Persia, mm-hmm. if 50 percent of the population, twice the land mass of the United States. And uh, the king was Xerxes. Uh, he was more of a drinker than a thinker. He just kind of did whatever he wanted to do. Misogynist, uh, power hungry. And then he had a right hand man named Haman that always rhymes with hangman, which is appropriate because mm-hmm. he was a murderer. That's how it, it turned out. Exactly. No. And he wanted to kill all the Jews. And so that's kind of the context. And then in his court was Mordecai, uh, a Jew, but th- Mordecai did not tell people he was Jewish. And he had this niece who became queen without telling anybody she was Jewish. And so I know that they are heroes, but in the beginning they were clandestine in their faith, but it was a crisis that forced them to uh, be forthcoming about their faith. Esther uh, Mordecai refused to bow before Haman. Esther put her uh, life on the line by appearing before King Xerxes without any invitation. And literally, they saved the entire Jewish nation in a time of great crisis. Yeah. And, and there's something about standing up for the right thing mm-hmm. yeah. that goes into this. Um, mm-hmm. And yet, the, in the, but the way they did it was not violent. The way they did it was... Um, Real strength. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wearsby says meekness is not weakness, it's power under control. That's it. And um, how do we right size our view of God to inspire us to live that way? Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned God because the book of Esther is famous for not mentioning God. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's one of the two mm-hmm. books in the Bible where the name of God doesn't appear. Uh, but as John Calvin stated centuries ago, his fingerprints are on every paragraph. Mm-hmm. I mean, God's sovereignty is woven uh, throughout this this entire story. And I think the big message of Esther 
is that we need to have a bigger view of God. I mean, a huge view of God. If, you, if, if you're a Jew in 4th or 5th century uh, B.C. Persia, you feel like a mosquito in comparison to to mm-hmm. the Persian Empire, and they're going to come down on you with their heavy boots at any moment. Mm-hmm. And then just from a moment to the next, God rewrites and reroutes the story. Mm-hmm. So maybe there's a listener today who feels like you're overwhelmed or or uh, just, just coming undone by everything. Mm-hmm. Just believe in a big God, and he's going to help you. Trust him. Max Licato is my guest this segment here on the show. The book is You Were Made for This Moment. Uh, It is available tomorrow in bookstores, and you order it today from uh, online, Amazon, or wherever else. You can, uh, of course, get it very, very quickly since it starts tomorrow. Courage for today and hope for for tomorrow. Also, they're doing a live event tomorrow night. You can register for free at faithgateway.com slash moment, and it'll be all about this book. It will. Tony Dungy's going to be with us. Um, Tony Evans and his entire family, Natalie Grant, and my precious wife, Deanlin, as of 40 years last month. All right. Yeah. It's a good lineup. On it. That's yeah. a really good lineup. Yeah, and I'm surprised yeah. they let me on the program. Yeah. <laughs> well, sometimes if we organize it, we get to do stuff with cool people. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's a couple of cool Tonys right there. They're both great men. All of those folks are great. That's that's pretty incredible. So, again, the book is You Were Made for This Moment, Courage for Today, Hope for Tomorrow. What's the main takeaway you hope people get from this? I hope people... Um, will consider the possibility that they were made for this moment. You know, that phrase comes from what Mordecai said to Esther. Mm -hmm. You were Uh, made for a time such as this. You were made for a time such as this. And she says, okay, I'll go. I'll appear before the king. If I perish, I perish. I believe that we are on the planet right now for this purpose, that God determined our generation. He determined our zip code. He determined our nation. And there is something in you, there's something in me, there's something in every person that God can use to advance his cause and help his people. Uh And so the real question is not, uh, why me? But the real question is, God, how? How can you use me? And if we can make that shift in our mindset, and your story is the perfect illustration of this, Dave. I I know that you had tough days early in your career when bankruptcy was knocking on your door. And then look how you use that and God used that to bless millions of people all over the planet. Yours truly being one of them. And so we appreciate you. You're an example of courage for all of us. You're a good man. We appreciate you. Pastor Max Licato. This book is a, a must read. You were made for this moment. If you were wondering if you were, we can both answer the question, yes, you were. And when you read through this, it'll confirm it. Courage for today, hope for tomorrow. Pick it up anywhere great books are sold. Pastor, good to be with you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Great to see you. Thanks for hanging out. Stay safe. This is The Ramsey Show. On baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With health care costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it.
Dr. John Deloney Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Open phones as we talk about your life and your money. It's a free call at 888-825-5225. David is in Dallas. Hi, David. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello, Dave. This is Dave. From there, I want to congratulate you on everything that's going on. And Max definitely has some great introductions to today's topics. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've been following. I've been following you with my uh, family for well over fifteen years, and I can say your program works. Well, thank you, because sir. Because I facilitated FPU numerous times, went through the entire process, baby step seven, EDM. Wow. And from there, the biggest improvements over here is that the life insurance chapter is a very important item. Oh no. Mm. That we had, that means I'm, I'm having bad. to exercise the life insurance policy on my wife that passed away last month. Oh no. I'm sorry, David. What I happened to have, her? Uh, it, it basically looks like it's COVID-related. Oh, no. And how uh, how long were y'all married? 22 years. Wow. I'm so sorry. How can we help today? Uh, from there, I have two children, an 18-year-old and 16-year-old. And what I'm trying to... What I want your opinion on is perhaps the best one of the structures for doing the, with the life insurance payout. From there, the, the two big things I'm looking at is one version of it is all of the money can come straight to me. And then from there, I do come up with some type of investment or you know, real estate of some sort. Or there's another strategy that I'm thinking about of disclaiming part of it and letting it split to each of the kids. And the, well, the question I have, though, is that is that, going to be, is that going to mess up my kids by having too much money too early, too young? I think they're responsible, but I'm, I'm concerned about messing up their relationships for their Potential mates and new spouses as they enter into their new adult life. Yeah, how much life insurance is involved? Uh, about two hundred and fifty k. Okay, all right. And your net worth is a total of what? Uh, about three point six. Good for you. Well done. Um, I can tell you what I would do, and then I'll tell you why. Okay. Uh, I would take it as a lump sum to you, and make it part of your estate that you leave to your kids. Uh, that does away with all your worries of the other things, and you can distribute it to them as they have shown themselves capable of carrying the weight of wealth. Wealth is a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing in that you get to do a lot of wonderful things with it. It's a curse in that it's heavy because it, requ- it means you are responsible for managing a lot of God's money and God's stuff and God's assets. And the more stuff you own, the more repairmen you have to know. And so uh, the good news is you get to do a lot of wonderful things with generosity when you're wealthy. You get to feed hungry kids. You get to do wonderful, helpful things. You get to do nice things for your family and yourself. Um, And it just gives you more of a stress-free version of life. That's why we call it financial peace, two words that don't go together, like Congress Congress intelligence. I don't know. Is that is that a thing? But anyway, uh, oh, fa- Fauci math. That's one that doesn't go together. But um, the uh, I'm looking for oxymorons here. Airline service. There's another. One. But um, okay. But anyway, yeah. That's uh, uh, I just put it into your name, and that that way you don't have any. You don't have some teenagers, and you're worried about the weight on them. I want them to have just the margin, the room to grieve without any extra weight of anything right now. The loss of their mom. What are you thinking, John? David, you said it was a month ago? Yes. Yeah, I, along with Dave, I, I really don't want people making those type of decisions for six months, nine months, and letting the smoke clear on some of this. And the temptation is when you've lost somebody as important and as, as, uh, as a cornerstone to your existence as your wife, you clearly love her, and she was an integral part of your every breath you took. It's it's natural to want to start trying to control every variable in your life, including the money, the this, the this, the this, and you start thinking five years, ten years down the road. That's a brain that, in a heart, in a spirit that is just grasping for control. And I want you to park that money and keep take, like Dave said, taking a lump sum and just spend a season grieving the loss of your best friend, of your wife. And that's going to be relinquishing some control, getting around some buddies that you care about and you love, and um, that will just sit with you. And some of these things that feel so pressing right now tend to clear themselves up over six months, over a year. Um, and what if you can, and you've done so well financially, you don't, you're not having to go to work on Monday to make 
you know, make the electric bill. And so I want you to spend some, a season grieving. And just like Dave said, hold that, hold on to that money right now, and the rest of that stuff will take care of itself over the next few years. An interesting technicality that adds to this suggestion and makes it possible is you can transfer any amount of your estate to anyone while you're alive with no estate taxes and no gift taxes under the Unified Estate Tax Credit up to the federal exemptions. Now, word is that President Biden is getting ready to lower the federal exemption considerably, but it's not going to be down to 3.6 or 3.85 if we add 250 to it. So if you move the money into your name uh, later on, you could move it to their names under the Unified Estate Tax Credit with no tax implications whatsoever. And so that gives you the ability to delay this decision, Yeah, to not have to do it right now. And um, it's not I, I wouldn't put it on my teenagers. No. Um, uh, now, uh, but I would begin to talk to them, not this minute, but later in the year uh, about the money that you have and what it's going to look like when they manage it. And, you know, if you're doing heroin, you're gonna, not going to be in the will because I don't want to finance your death. Mm-hmm. If you're misbehaving in other ways, I don't want to finance your misbehavior. That's not a blessing then. That's when wealth is a curse. So uh, in order to, to uh, qualify to manage God's money, our kids have to be behaving God's ways. It's also a good moment. Uh, I'm assuming they followed the plan. They've been teaching it. So I'm, I imagine he's got a rhythm where him and his wife did a budget every month. And they talked about short-term and long-term financial goals. This can be a masterful moment for his kids' legacy, mm-hmm. for them to become a part of this monthly budget. You keep that same meeting that you had with your wife every month, just mm-hmm. invite them along and say, here's what bills look like, here's what this all looks like. Absolutely. Carrie's in Naples, Florida. Hi, Carrie. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, David, Dr. John. Um, I w- wanted to call in and ask, uh, my husband and I are 28, 29. We're on baby steps uh, four and six. We are kind of at a crossroads. We have about... $100,000 in the bank right now, 30 of that's kind of earmarked for our emergency fund. So we've got 70 where we're trying to figure out if we should, we started investing kind of late. So um, I'm wondering if I should be dumping like maybe 30,000 just into investments to catch up a little bit on our investments because, you know, the money's working harder for what's us your, there. What's your household income? And, uh, about 150 okay. uh, projected. If you year. want to follow your plan, you can do that. But you're not following our plan right now. You're not on baby steps four and six. Baby step four is 15% of your income going into retirement, an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses, and everything else goes mm-hmm. on your home until your home is paid for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we are doing 15% now. We just started. I know, but you're not, you have not put all the money in on, on your house on baby step six. Right. The question I guess I got too, that. that kind of plays I got into that. it. And I've answered the question. <laughs> Okay. Now, do you yeah. want to now? So do you want to know really... why? Here's why. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This idea that you can get rich keeping a mortgage, there's no data points that indicate that. Seventy-seven percent of the millionaires that we studied had a paid-off house. Mm-hmm. Interesting. They didn't dump it all in the stock market because they thought they could make more. They didn't dump it all in mutual funds because they thought they could make more. They put a healthy amount in mutual funds because the typical millionaire, when we find them, the first area they hit is about a third of their net worth is their paid off home, about 500000 and then there's about a million over there in their mutual funds. You are not old. You have plenty of time. If you never do anything but 15% at your age and your income, you're going to be worth $10 million just doing that. If you never do anything else and you just burn the rest of the money in the middle of the front yard, you're mathematically going to be okay. So quit trying to fix this. It's not broken, kiddo. Dump that money on the house. Get your stinking house paid off fast as you can. And that's the fastest route between where you are and wealth is. That's what we teach. Now, if you want to do something else, you're welcome to.
Dr. John Deloney, my co-host today, open phones on the Ramsey Show in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Ethan and Whitney are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? They're fantastic. How are you? <laughs> Better than I deserve, brother. Where are you guys from? We are from Lucille, Mississippi, uh, about 30 minutes from the Gulf Coast. Ah, L.A., Lower Alabama. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> cool. It. Welcome, brother. Good to have you guys. How much debt have you all paid off? Fifty-six thousand seven hundred sixty-one dollars and five cents. Not that we're counting, right? Right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> How long did that take you? Thirty-six months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Started at thirty-four thousand, went up to seventy thousand. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> what do you guys do for a living? I'm a stay-at-home mom. Mm-hmm. And at the start of this journey, I was a science teacher, soccer coach. Went from that to a fitness instructor, and then uh, got furloughed and became a truck driver. Oh, wow. Yes. And that's how we go from 34 to 70 and double our income. That's it. Wow. A little bit of everything. You're not afraid of work. No, I'm jack of all trades. Yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you. Very cool. What kind of debt was the 57000 It was all student loans. All right. Good for you. So uh, what are the degrees in? Uh, my degree is in um, Bachelor of Science, Exercise Science. Mm -hmm. It was all his student loans. It was all, <laughs> it was all me. Okay. All right. So what happened three years ago put you guys on this journey? Well, we started uh, when I was 20. I heard about you from a coworker, and we were engaged at the time, so he jumped on board. We took FBU when we got married. Unfortunately, we failed the class. We were ish for a while. Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And ish is a wish, so it didn't work. That's right. <laughs> and Can't so, half butt do this stuff. That's yeah. right. All right. Yeah, I realized ish wasn't working, and I was pregnant with my fourth baby, and I knew we had all these student loans mm. piled up, and I didn't even know the balance of it. <laughs> That's how ish we were. Mm. But I looked, I thought I had an idea, and when I checked the balance, it was over 50000 and he took out 38000 So I was a little scared. Yeah. This is going the wrong way. That's right. right. <laughs> it's growing yeah, like that, cancer. That yeah, that is what fired me up, and I said, no more. We're doing gazelle intense. We're... I printed out all the charts. We did the debt snowball. It was eight total loans. We did from smallest to largest. He came home from work and saw all the stuff I printed out and put up on the wall. And we made chains out for the kids. Every time we did a certain amount, they broke a chain off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so yeah. Ethan, you came home and your wife had gone crazy. Yes, <laughs> yes. And what did you say? I said, I better be ready to eat some beans and rice, rice and beans. <laughs> <laughs> I knew real quick what I was about to be into. <laughs> she seems, Whitney, you seem like somebody who is so lovely and easygoing. But when that switch flips, it is, you knew, didn't you? That's knew, right. It's going to happen. Yeah. Hey, yep. so I, I have an identity question for you. So, Ethan, when you're a teacher... You're a teacher. Right. And then when you're a fitness person, you're a fitness person. How have you been able to toggle these? I, those are two significant lifelong identities. Right. And here you are. You know what? I'm going to double my income. I'm going to keep putting food on my table in the middle of a pandemic. I'm going to become a truck driver. I'll do whatever it takes. How did you do that? Well, I just knew that uh, when I got furloughed and I was just trying to just go survival mode during that time and... Uh, I just, I wasn't hearing anything. I was supposed to only be furloughed for about six weeks. Wasn't hearing anything. Um, so I was like, I've got to do something. I, I'm tired of having this debt on me. This was all my debt. So I'll be the one to go do something. And um, I was looking into the CDL. I saw that you could go to school for a couple of weeks, uh, get your license, and then you can immediately go work over the road and just make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I won't do it. So uh, Whitney got on board with me, um, got done with it real quick, and um, it was rough at first because, you know, I always like to run, I like to exercise, I'm just stuck in a truck. Uh, I made it work out for me, I kept my exercise stuff with me, I'm that weird guy that would be at a rest area just running <laughs> at different places, but um, I knew that it was going to be worthwhile just getting out of this debt. That's yeah. incredible. What's your long-term goal? Well, I'm actually I'm starting to look into personal training again. Mm -hmm. I, I am enjoying driving a truck. Um, 
I'll keep doing it, but I would love to just go back into personal training, uh, make sure I wouldn't put any debt or anything Mm -hmm. with that, of course, but uh, see if I can start getting clientele again and just get back to what i love okay are you still driving over the road or i'm actually i'm, I'm local now so okay. once we got out of so dead, you're home at night That's i'm good. home every night now okay uh so i get to see the kids spend quality time with them mm-hmm. and i'm um, still making good money yeah yes. absolutely you are well done well i love it you're willing to do whatever it takes for your family absolutely. for yourself on the short term and then we start looking at the long term figure out what we're going to do and now you don't have any debt how's that feel Great. <laughs> don't have so this good. burden over our shoulders. Yeah. What do you tell people the secret to getting out of debt is? Uh, for me, it's contentment. You see your friends going and doing things, and you have to tell yourself no. You have to tell the kids no. So I would say contentment. Yes. Uh, mine was every day, think about the end goal. Say, how are you going to get there, even if you knew it was going to be hard, uh, but you take it one day at a time. Mm-hmm. Pushing through. You guys are incredible. Yeah, I, I just I hope everybody listening to this, the millions of people listening to this here, it's so easy to get trapped into an identity. And I'm a this person, and we attach that to our work. And you've on multiple occasions said, I'm a kind of guy that takes care of his wife and kids. I'm a kind of guy that's not scared of hard work. I'm I'm a guy that can reinvent myself and go jogging at a truck stop while my, <laughs> my buddies are all eating chicken fingers for breakfast. Good for you, my man. What an absolute stud. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. I agree. Heroes. You took control of your life and you can. And then that gives you options to readjust from there right. and do whatever you want to do. You can choose to continue to drive a truck or you can choose to do something else. And that's nothing. no shame in either one of those, by the way. Yeah, that's right. It's awesome. Uh, awesome. Uh, this, this willingness to, it's both of those are a type of contentment, really. Both of you. Um, where you just said, whatever. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, let's do it. We'll pay the price because it's worth it. Now, was it worth it? Yes, you know it, it was. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Look at your smiles. It's unbelievable, man. That's very wow. cool. And you brought the kiddos with you. What are their names and ages? Yeah, Let's we, have, have them get up in the shot. Okay. We have Hayden, mm-hmm. is six. Mm-hmm. AJ is seven. Mm-hmm. Eli is four. Mm-hmm. Addie is three. All right. That's AJ's perfect. AJ's rocking the mullet, baby. It looks great. I love it. <laughs> Very well done. Good stuff. Well, we got a copy of The Legacy Journey for you. That is your next chapter in your story to become Baby Steps Millionaires. Completely change this whole family tree, which you're in the process of doing. I'm so proud of y'all. Very, Thank very you. well done. We got a copy Thank of Total you. Money Makeover for you to give away to somebody and help them out, and you can pay it forward a little bit as well. So show someone else how to do what you guys have done and just remind them not to do ish, huh? That's right. <laughs> ish is a wish. <laughs> I love it. Ethan and Whitney, AJ, Hayden, Eli, and Addie. Fifty-seven thousand dollars paid off in thirty-six months, making thirty-four to seventy, doing whatever it takes to win. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Are right, you ready? Three, Three two, one. one. We're debt free. Debt free! <laughs> done you guys very very well done i can tell by the volume of a couple of those kids they are done with rice and beans dave <laughs> <laughs> they want a hamburger well they like celebrating and they we could we, we tore off enough of those uh cardboard links off that chain to where our family's free that's exactly right and you can remember that when you're six and you can remember that when you're five and you can remember that when you're eight it's very possible you'll remember the day mom and daddy changed our lives. And one of them's going to come in and say, hey, dad, I got accepted to such and such college, but I'm going to need to take out a student loan. And he's going to remember her look that she gave him that one day. <laughs> and he's going to say, no, son, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think that's going to occur, that's young right. man. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, love it. This is The Ramsey Show.
55% of Americans want to change jobs this year. The struggle with burnout is real. The struggle with existential crisis is real. We've even given this a name, the Great Resignation, it is called. Uh, But just like you need a plan for your money, you absolutely need a plan for your career. Ask yourself, what do I like about my current job? What do I not like about my current job? What does my dream job look like? And what do I need to do in order to have my dream job? If it's time to make a change, America's career coach Ken Coleman has written out his proven career plan in this brand new book, From Paycheck to Purpose. Stop settling for just another paycheck and find the work that brings purpose and joy into your life. The book, plus the $100 in free tools, because it's in pre-sale, will send you for pre-ordering. will help you find out what you're meant to do, who you're meant to be, where your dream job is. Everyone needs to read this book before changing jobs. Don't just go chasing something. That's going to get you in trouble. Get your copy from Paycheck to Purpose today at RamseySolutions.com. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. Find out for yourself why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. You get free samples, free shipping. And with the new promos they run every month, you'll save even more. Today's question comes from Regina in Kentucky. Regina writes, My husband's 86-year-old father moved in with us after his wife passed away. At the time, he had over $2 million in retirement investments. Two years ago, he met a woman who's 54. He has spent well over $800,000 on her. Nothing his children say will deter him from pulling money out of his investments to make her happy. When we talk to him about this, he says if he runs out of money, we'll just have to provide for him. My husband and I did not sacrifice to build our retirement just to support a lovesick old man. Whoa. Dang. <laughs> Whoa. What is the family obligation Slice. to support aging family members? Can I just divorce my father-in-law? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Dave? I've been doing this a long time. I've never heard that. Wow. Can I divorce my father-in-law? A lovesick old man. <laughs> lovesick she old man. She is over this. Whew. Can you tell? Dave, what do you think about this? About her? I think she's pissed. I, I know she <laughs> okay. is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty obvious. The, 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 the email has heat on it. Yeah, it, I just set it down. It burns. Um, this reminds me of an inverse problem, and I don't, I don't have a ton of experience with um, 86, you know, 87, 88, what we call geriatric older folks, uh, family members. I always I, – I know that there is a – I feel a responsibility, if you will, to to love and support my parents as best I can. The other side of this is it reminds me of an old Henry Cloud statement when you're talking about young kids, which is um, if he's 15 and he was acting like this, Henry would say, Dr. Cloud would say, he needs some problems. Uh-huh. And the 86-year-old who is taking advantage of his children at this point and uh-huh. just burning through his money, which he's allowed to do, it's his money, uh-huh. but he also has no repercussion for it because he feels like he's got a safety net. So at some point, it feels like the his kids can make a make the, set their boundaries and then dad with his $1.2 million left gets to make some of his own decisions. Yeah. What do you think about that? It sounds far be feels harsh just saying that out loud too. Um, no, here, here's the thing. I, I think that we're called to take care of our family. I agree. But we need to define take care of our family. Right. The problem with enablers is, is that they, and she's not, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the problem with enablers is, is that they define help improperly. Uh, they provide help as being nice and allowing people to continue in their misbehavior. That's not actually helping this man. Correct. This man has another problem, okay? we Everyone hearing this story, through this lady's eyes anyway, uh, is really confirmed that this 54-year-old is not attracted to this 86-year-old. Hmm. She's attracted to his money. Right. She's a gold digger. Um, and, and we're well aware his birthday her. suit needs ironing, okay? <laughs> I mean, this is, this is not an attraction. This is a money thing. Hmm. It's a money play. And um, so... You know, he's being taken advantage of. Right. Are you helping him by winking and nodding at it? Hmm. That's enabling. I don't think you're helping him. Right. So I think you got to love him, not be disgusted, love him enough to not be disgusted with him. She's pretty angry. Right. But gently and kindly just say, Dad, there are some consequences of your misbehavior. Right. Because this lady's not after you. 
She's taking advantage of you. Everyone that loves you is telling you that. And you technically have a right to be stupid. That's not illegal. It's your money. Yeah. It's your money. But you can't live here Yeah. while you're doing it. We're not going to condone it. And you need to go ahead and be on notice that we do not feel obligated to take care of you um, as if you weren't, didn't burn through $2 million mm -hmm. by giving it to a gold digger. And so, Dad, um, if you're going to continue to give her money, you can't stay here. Yeah. And you cannot expect future help from us. Now, if you're hungry, you can come over and have dinner. Mm -hmm. We're not going to allow you to be hungry. We're not going to, you know, but we are not obligated to support you while you're doing cocaine. Right. I always just kind of, one of the things I do in my head, if I think I'm being an enabler, because I really, people think I'm just a smart aleck, which I am, but yeah. they, they also, you know, but I got this huge heart and I have a real tendency to participate in people's insanity. Just keep going and going. I, and going. I don't know. I think most people do. Yep. Most of us that love people, mm -hmm. you know, we have a tendency to do that. And I just extrapolate it to something extreme mm -hmm. and say, if he was doing cocaine, would you allow him to stay in your house? Right. No. Well, all that is, is another form of misbehavior. Mm -hmm. If he was, you know, if he was boiling crack in the back bedroom, you know, <laughs> would you allow him to stay here? That's another form of misbehavior. But that's kind of taking it crazy. But that helps you think about, even though this this is a little more socially acceptable mm. than boiling crack in the back bedroom, yeah. right? And so, um, you do you do boil crack? Not, not really. But I'm, I'm gonna let it ride. I'm gonna let it ride. Cooking crack. I didn't want to. I didn't want to drop my my crack knowledge okay, here on the right. show. In, in the middle of the, wrong, in, in the middle show. of my uh, soliloquy. That's but right. uh, you'll mess up my poetry. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's. Uh, Can uh, I tell you some heat that I think I uh, feel on this? Yeah. And this is since Regina's not here. I think she's been mad a long time. She's been mad a long time. She's mad at her husband for not stepping in the middle of this. Mm -hmm. And this is hard. But when you have an 86-year-old in your home with this kind of money, it's easy to start spinning it in your head. Mm -hmm. It's easy to start thinking, man, mm -hmm. just when he so-and-so passes away, we'll be able to get this and mm -hmm. we'll be able to take care of that. Mm -hmm. And to see it just liquidating on somebody who mm -hmm. you think has ulterior motives. Oh, well, we all know, do. It just I think I think, I think she does. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, just, I don't think there's any question about that. But yeah, yeah, you need to check your own heart and make sure what you're really. He's allowed at. to do what he wants to do with his money, and, but, but um, he's not allowed to live in my house. But you got to draw boundaries, yeah. And I'm not required by moral standards to take care of someone's misbehavior. Hmm. I am required to honor my father and mother, which means I honor the office hmm. of father. I'm required to honor the president. Uh, we've had several presidents in the last few years that I agreed with almost nothing any of them did. Right. But that doesn't mean I'm going to dishonor the office. Of the of yeah. the president of the United States, I, I can I don't have to dishonor the office of father, mm -hmm. but I can dishonor his behavior. There you go. I can disagree with the president's behavior. You can draw boundaries and go. That's out of control. You're acting like an Alzheimer's patient. Mm -hmm. Quit that. You know, I'm not going to take take direction from you. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, and this is important. Y'all have already talked to him. You've done the right thing. You sat down and talked to him. He said, I don't care. Yeah, she's more important than y'all are. Yeah. So and go, go, go live boundaries. with her. Yeah. So go live with her. Draw boundaries. And see how long you get to stay after you run out of money. Mm, not very long. Yeah. About 20 seconds. <laughs> oh, man. So, that's so sad. That is heartbreaking. But, yeah, you're, you're, you are going to have to move him out. Yeah. Um, and your husband's going to have to be the one that does it. And your husband's going to have to up, step up and get a backbone and deal with this. Because you're going to end up really further pissed at him if you don't. Yeah, you're going to end up losing your marriage over this. You all got to be on the same page right here. Yeah, and it feels like. Feel, yeah, I, I think while your husband's gone up to about a three boil, you boiled over. Yeah, she's over. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, you're going to end up thinking you can deal with this, and it's not it's not in your purview to deal with his dad. No, because what happens is is his dad's going to go away and pass away, and then you're going to have to lose your husband because you kicked my dad out. Yeah. And um, yeah. you're going to have a whole other set of mess. Right? Yeah. There's a, you got to be together There's on a different one. script that's going to play then exactly right so everybody's got to get on the same page wow yuck man yup yup there we go <laughs> this is the ramsey show This is James, senior producer for The Ramsey Show. Did you know over 18 million people listen to The Ramsey Show every week? And a lot of those people listen on one of our 600-plus radio stations across the country. 
To find a station near you, head to theramseyshow.com. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. It is a free call at 888-825-5225. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today as we answer your questions here, again, about your life and your money. If you haven't tuned into the Dr. John Deloney Show, you should. Most of America is now. It is a ragingly popular podcast. comes out three times a week these days. You can call in and be a part of the podcast if you'd like. We'd love to have you do that and be one of the call on his show if you've got questions about relationships about boundaries about life you can uh, email us at askjohn at ramseysolutions.com or leave a voicemail at 844-693-3291 sue starts off this hour in greenville south carolina hi sue welcome to the ramsey show hey thanks so much for taking my call sure what's up um so I'm a 57-year-old uh, veteran, and I'm single, and I've been debt-free for six years now. I own my home free and clear. Um, I came down to this area to be closer to my mom. She's since passed away. Mm. Now I want to move up north to be closer to my son, and um, the cost of living and housing is more expensive up there. And I was saving money um to buy a farm, but decided I can't do that. So I've got I've got a chunk of cash that I can put to a house up where I want to go, and then I could take the cash out of this house, um, and and you know do a cash purchase, or I could get a mortgage and rent this house out down here. I'm trying to figure out what the best thing would be to do. What do you do for um, a living? I'm a disabled vet, so okay. I, I help I help some young farmers in, in our area with their But your, your income that you eat but, with is disability income from the veterans. Correct, yeah, okay. military retirement, yeah. yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you for your service, yeah. and I'm sorry oh, you were hurt. My pleasure. Yeah, yeah no, so my pleasure. You, you're going up to see your son, but it sounds like you love farming, and you love working with mentoring young farmers. Is that a, is that a worthy well, I, trade here? I love I love growing. Yeah, well, I've discovered like farming um, in the heat of the summer is, is very challenging. I like starting seeds, so I I, I want to shift to working more like with nurseries, plant okay. nurseries and native plants and butterflies. Can you do that, that if you? Where place. Where is up north? What's that mean? Where are you going? Uh, um, the Chicago area. And, okay. Yeah. Uh, are you gonna Are you gonna plug into the there. agricultural scene out away from Chicago, but in that general area? I was going to stay closer to the city and and do do more like the like of the plant plant nurseries versus okay. actual farming farming yeah, yeah something more 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 toward my abilities okay. you know. Here's the easy answer yeah. to your question is what you called for and that is sell the house in Greenville pay cash for the house that you moved to in Chicago, okay. Okay. Now here's okay. why I reverse engineer these questions in my mind and it gives me the answer instantly and I'll teach you the technique and that way you can do it next time. If you owned a paid for house in Chicago to be near your son, would you suddenly jump up and go buy a rental in Greenville, South Carolina with debt? No. See, it's the same thing, but in reverse. Right. And so it tells me not to keep the house in Greenville. You're becoming a Greenville investor by default, not by strategy. Right. Well, the only thing is, I could, I could, it, it could be a source of income. If Doesn't you will. change anything. You still yeah. answered no. Right. 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 And you answered no yeah. because it was wise to answer no. 
Uh-huh. You instantly, yep. you didn't have to think about it. You just went, no, I wouldn't buy a rental right. house in Greenville, South Carolina, if I freaking live in Chicago. No! Right. Uh, you know, some idiot will change his Harley in your living room floor. You know, no. You can't manage property four, five hundred, six hundred miles away yeah, adequately. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah no. well, my only other concern is that, well, it's cold up there. I mean, I grew up in Maine, but it's cold up there. And, and all my friends down here are like, well, you could you could keep the keep the other house. and, and You can you also know, come down there and visit when you don't have a house visit, payment anytime right. you want. Yeah, this is true, right? Go yeah, rent you a yeah, B&B for three weeks with what used to be a house payment. Right. And right. you change the oil yeah. to your Harley in their living room. <laughs> 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 it works way better that way. <laughs> It's a better breakout. Ramona's in Seattle. Hi, Ramona. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hello. Hi. How um, can we help? I had a yes. I'm at a loss. I lost my brother um, three weeks ago. Oh my um, God. He was 27. Very unexpected. Um, and I don't. He has no kids, no marriage, no will. He lived with me. What do I do with? his debt and what do I do with his assets everyone keeps telling me to get a probate lawyer my dad I'm trying to help my dad and my mom out my mom has put it all on me because I took care of him and my dad he wants to push everything to the side and just says he is grieving and he doesn't want to deal with it and he 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 doesn't know how to move forward and so I'm trying to he owes the IRS he has you know, all these debts and stuff. And what, what do I do? When do I, when do we get this ball rolling on taking care of things? I'm so sorry. What a mess. Why were you having to take care of him? What was wrong with him? Um, a lot. So he, um, a lot of medical problems. Um, he had type one diabetes with adrenal deficiency, which, um, played a big role. He had intestine problems. Um, also, um, mental problems. So it was, just a lot of brain damage um yeah we found him um i left the house came back a few hours later and and i found him um from Mm. home with no pulse he uh his blood sugar went too low had a seizure and he um died from there i'm so sorry never woke up you really 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 did everything you could to take care of your brother Mm -hmm. what a great sister I'm so sorry. So my guess is with what you're describing to me that he did not own anything. No assets. Um, just like just like vehicle, two vehicles and Do they yeah, have that payments vehicles. on them? No. Okay, what are they worth? Um nothing. Okay. They're not worth anything. Okay. No, they're probably worth at most a thousand dollars. Yeah. And so, and and all so all he has is debts. Correct. Okay. All right. Um, for your sanity and the sanity of your dad, um, I want to clear these debts off so they don't pester you. You do not owe them. Your dad does not owe them. Your mom does not owe them. They're not going to get paid because he didn't have any money. When you pass away, what you own stands good for what you owe. So get a copy of his death certificate and send copies of the death certificate to the IRS and any other debtors you're aware of with a letter that says, uh, my brother so-and-so passed away on such and such a date. Here's the death certificate. He did not have any assets. You will not be paid. And it's just that simple. You don't need a probate lawyer. You don't need anything because there's nobody, there's nothing to collect. There's nothing to collect it from. Yeah, and Ramona, often when we walk in and see the situation that you saw, I'm so sorry that you saw that. I want you to know it's not your fault. Your brother was lucky to have you in his life, taking care of him and loving him the way you did. Mm -hmm. And you're going to need to get somebody to walk alongside you. Yeah. Get with a good pastor and unpack some of this. You're hurting, kiddo. Stop paying your overpriced wireless provider and switch to Pure Talk. They use the same network as the larger providers for much less. For just $30 a month, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data with no contract. The average family saves over $70 a month by switching to Pure Talk. Just go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. 
Pure Talk, simply smarter wireless. personality is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. How many times in the past year have you heard someone say, I just wish things would get back to normal? Well, I kind of think we all think that, but what was normal like for you? Was it really that good? Are you worried about money? Uh, too much to do? Not enough time to do it all? Well, you shouldn't have to go back to that normal. Hey, there's a better idea. We want to help you with a game plan. And uh, that's tomorrow night, September the 28th. Game Plan Live, our free live stream. It's me, Christy Wright, and George Camel. We're going to be talking about your time, about goal setting, and about your money, and laying out a clear game plan to make sure those goals happen. And... uh, Let's have a vision for your life. Let's do some stuff here. You can have the abundant, balanced, debt-free life you want. And it starts with Game Plan Live, a free live stream from our own auditorium here tomorrow night, right here in the Ramsey headquarters. We've got about 300 folks attending the the live stream already. And if you want to attend online, all you have to do is text Game Plan to 33789. It is free, a free live stream, September the 28th, tomorrow night. All one word, 33789, text game plan. We would love to have you join us and be part of that. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today, best-selling author. Anna is in St. Louis. Hi, Anna. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Anna? Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you, Dave? Good. How can I help? Oh, so I have a question regarding, um, so my husband and I are in baby step 3B, and my husband works in um, commission-based jobs, so we don't have any credit score. So in order for us to get underwritten for a home loan, we have to wait two years. So we're going to have to wait two years to get a uh, a home loan, to qualify us for a home loan with Churchill Mortgage. Oh. A couple of days ago, my father-in-law and my mother-in-law, who are in baby step 7, offered to purchase a house and get and let us rent to own it from them. And I have been thinking about it and wondering what, if that's a good idea or uh, if that's something that's better not to just uh, not worry about. Yeah. How old are you guys? Uh, 27 to 28. And what's your household income? About 3000 a month. 3000 a month? Okay. Um, what does your husband do? He's a plumber. Okay, that's good news. Okay. And has his income been going up? Yeah. Good. He's still on an apprenticeship. Yeah. When will he finish that? Uh, I think he can get his journeyman after four years. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll go up from there. Okay. Um... This is the kind of deal that makes sense mathematically and is a relational minefield. If you miss a payment, you might go sideways and have a weird Thanksgiving dinner. As a matter of fact, you might really have a high potential for a weird Thanksgiving dinner. Um... And so I, um, I tell parents not to loan their kids money, grown kids, and, um, I, and I tell people not to, let me tell you, the borrower is slave to the lender. And when you eat Thanksgiving dinner with your master, the turkey tastes different. And so I would tell you not to do this on that basis. Instead, use that two years to save money and get your income right. stabilized and get his income up. I think your in-laws are not bad people. I think they're very generous. They're being kind. They're trying to be trying to get their grandbaby that I hear in the background into a house. I appreciate that out of them. And they're probably not bad people. They're probably not toxic and controlling or something like that, or you wouldn't even be considering this. But 
um, I, I just am not, I don't want you to be susceptible to that. I, I tell people not to do this because I've seen more of it go sideways than not. What are you thinking, John? I'm thinking under no circumstances whatsoever should you do this. And I wasn't even thinking about Thanksgiving. I was thinking about that little baby you're holding. And when mother-in-law says, well, you know, you should be, that's a lot different when she owns your mortgage. Yeah. And suddenly that baby's got two moms, two dads. And can I be honest with you? Absolutely. It sounds like you knew the answer, Colin. I could hear it in your voice. Does your husband want to do this and you don't? I think you're right. I think we kind of knew we'd listened to Dave and Dr. D a lot. So we kind of knew the answer, but needed someone to tell us the answer. Uh. Yeah, I, 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 I'm a thousand percent with Dave. Your autonomy here, y'all are grinding it. He's working hard. You're working hard. You're young. You got time. Yeah. Get an apartment, get a two bedroom apartment and y'all make it work for the next two years and save, 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 save. And, um, every, uh, yeah, it sounds so good mathematically. Dave's right, but it's not a good move. Yeah. I, I just, uh, the, the, the problem is there are 30 years of doing this. I've seen, I'm like a cancer doctor. I see what causes cancer. Yeah. You know, and it's like, you know, you can do that if you want, but a lot of people I've seen with cancer had that. You know, I mean, it's like <laughs> that kind of a thing, right? And so that that's kind of what this falls into. Can you get away with it? Yeah, you can get away with it. Um, I remember when we went broke, uh, Sharon's dad uh, went to the bank and got a loan, as if he didn't have the money in a ca- coffee can in the backyard probably, but um, and uh, to help us save the house out of bankruptcy. And so we owed him some money. Um, And had to pay the payments to pay that loan off after bankruptcy. And um, he is one of the sweetest, kindest men I've ever known. Mm -hmm. He is just a great guy. And he never said, uh, didn't even wrinkle an eyebrow, never one little bit of voice inflection, Mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. Never said a negative word one time. But I, man, my butt was on fire. Yeah. I was driving me nuts. Of course, I'd just gone broke, too, so that's added to it, right? But um, but I'm like, I, this is killing me. I yeah. can't. I, well, I walked in his house. I felt different. Yep. It was just weird. Well, and that's, that's the you thing. And you if you don't acknowledge that, yeah. that's just, then you're just dumb. You can't calculate what those, oh, is, is, that the, is that the shirt he's wearing to church? Sounds different when she owns your mortgage. Yeah. Or, hey. Y'all are only going to stay for two days for Christmas? Sounds yeah. different when he owns your mortgage. It's yeah. just everything. Bec- it's like a domino of emotions and feelings and all that stuff. Yeah, it, it, and it's bad enough when you got a brand-new baby. Mm-hmm. There's all that there anyway. Right. But then on top of that, <laughs> yeah. you know, let's just go ahead and put in there that they oof, but it's man. so tempting and I, I you said it best dave those parents are they are loving those kids the I best way they know how I, I got nothing in her conversation that said they were you know, that they're no, that they're, they're off great. the rails that they're off the rails yeah nothing at all open phones oh, at hard. 888-825-5225 eduardo is in los angeles hi eduardo how are you hi dave thank you for taking my call sure what's up yes uh my question dave i have for you today is that um, I um, have my one thousand dollar deduct uh, down payment um, for the car. The, I recently had a collision, and um, oh, I'm alright. But uh, um, I'm following the baby steps, and uh, I kind of want to know your thoughts on if I should press pause. I was paying uh, some credit card debt. Um, and, uh, so what, how much damage know, was I, there to the car? Um, so I do I do have a estimate, and it, it says it's around a thousand, uh, a hundred and eleven hundred. Okay, and and you have a one thousand dollar deductible. Yeah, one thousand dollar deductible, and so I you're turning it into insurance car. benefits you by a hundred dollars. Yeah, I guess it sounds so. like the car is um, very drivable to me. Yeah, it is very reliable still. Uh, now, I said drive. drivable. After the wreck, you can drive it without fixing it, right? Yeah. Yeah, drive true. it. You don't need to pay fix a thousand dollar repair with a thousand dollar deductible. Don't turn that into insurance. Yeah, I mean, d- yeah, drive it and keep keep getting your debt paid off, brother. Yeah, plow through, brother. Grind, hustle, grind, hustle, grind, hustle. Sorry you got in a wreck. Yeah. This is the Ramsey Show.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. You can hear him every couple of days on a brand new podcast. Comes out three times a week called The Dr. John Deloney Show. You should tune into it. Most of America is these days. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage, Craig and Rachel are with us. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going? Great. How are you? Where do you live? We are from Central Michigan. All right. Very cool. Welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you guys paid off? We paid off 55000 Cool. Wow. How long did that take? Um, just shy of two years, 23 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? 50 and then we ended just over 70 Cool. What do you all do for a living? I work um, in customer service in the waste and recycling industry. Mm-hmm. And I'm a sales manager at our local radio station. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Very cool. Good old radio. Love great. it. Gotta yeah. love it. It's a That's, great world. Yeah, it's been a wild <laughs> world this year. It yeah, has. Craziness. I was going to draw a parallel between uh, waste management and the radio world, but I won't do that since we're on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> we already know. So. Yeah. We, we get it. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, what kind of debt was the 55000 Mainly my student loans, um, a couple cars, a couple credit cards. Normal Some debt. student loans. We were normal. Yeah. How long y'all been married? Five years. We actually, uh, so about 35 months prior to, to making our last payment, we started. And uh, two or three weeks into the journey, we found out that we were pregnant with our first our first child. And Yay! so everything got put on pause there for a little while. And so mm-hmm. that's why our, our journey is really only about 23 months. Okay. Very uh, good. Yeah. Very cool. So what got, made you guys decide to get serious about this get out of debt thing? We had always kind of been on a budget, but not a Dave budget by any means. Um, And we knew we wanted to start a family. And so we were like, all right, we got to get serious. We got to start this process. Um, And then three weeks into it, we really had to get serious. (laughs) Um, So just she's our why um, Mm -hmm. moving forward. Yeah. And to be honest, you know, for me, what it was, was hearing you talk about changing your family tree and your legacy. And Mm -hmm. uh, with us starting, it was like, okay, she's going to drag me along. I'm definitely the spender. Anybody that knows us knows that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm the spender. I'm the free spirit. And uh, so we started, I was excited. And then three weeks in, we obviously got the news. And so that message of changing your family tree really hit me in a different way. And it was like, all right, it's time to, to get really serious about this. There is something magical happens when the first baby comes. It's like, there is. Game on. There is for sure. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I hear you. Well, congratulations, you guys. Yeah, thank you. We, so who had the conversation with who? Well. Well, I started. Um, friends of ours, Chris and Kendra, actually sat down and helped me write our first budget. And I was like, we're starting. It's going to happen. We're just going to start. And then he started listening to your show every day every hour like got crazy (laughs) and so then we were both on board and there was no stopping at that point are we on one of your stations uh unfortunately i'm on the competitor as of right now (laughs) i'm on the competitor uh, okay there's actually not really any local stations that are carrying you oh Uh, my gosh they're a little ways away but but we definitely tuned in we tuned in on youtube and uh, on the podcast and all any way we could we did and uh before long, we were driving some Dave cars, and um, probably my biggest struggle throughout this whole thing was wanting to get a new lawnmower. We, we purchased a new house uh, before we were on the plan, and it's got some acreage, and we, we wanted to, well, I wanted to get a new zero-turn mower. And, sure. You know, you know the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, instead, I'm driving a 1986 lawnmower around, and um, that's our... That's our form of entertainment sometimes. Oh, there's a it's, picture of it on YouTube. Yeah, I love yeah. it. It doesn't even have the hood yeah, on it. It doesn't have the hood. I like it. Put the girls in the wagon and we go for a drive. That's uh, that's how we have fun in Michigan, that's apparently. That's a manly lawnmower right there. There's our Dave track yes. for sure. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Wow, 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 wow. You well, guys very did, well y'all, done. Y'all weren't making a million dollars. Y'all didn't mess around. This was a hard yeah. year and a half for you guys. It was. No, we were be- very blessed um, to keep our jobs through everything that happened, and we student loans went on, and uh, zero interest, and everything was put on hold. And we said, "This is our chance. This mm-hmm. is our blessing. This is our time to just start throwing everything we've got at it." So the last 
nine or ten months, we actually paid off twenty thousand of it. Wow. Whoa! So, game I, on. I, I've got to tell you guys that uh, this May we celebrated our fifth anniversary, <laughs> and we had a, an elaborate trip planned for the weekend. And instead of going on that trip, we decided let's take the money that we would have spent because it's pretty close to what our last payment is. Let's just pay off our debt. And so we actually on our fifth wedding anniversary, we made our final payment. Submit. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Ding ding. Stayed Push the home button. And yep. Submitted our last. And and payment. celebrated. And it was great. Yeah. So that means you've had several months of the, both checks depositing and no bills. Yes. Feels good, huh? It's been wonderful. That's, that's cool. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Um, for me, I was the one to actually write the budgets each month, and there were so many times in the middle where it's not like the beginning fun, exciting point, and you're not in the home stretch yet, and there's so many times where you're like... I don't want to do another month. I don't want to do another month. Something hits, life hits, and you're like, oh, it's not working. But just keep writing the budgets, keep doing it, stay consistent, and just keep moving. It's the grind. It is. It is. For me, I would say just listen to your wife and, and do as she says. And um, No, I think uh, just finding that why, and it's going to change multiple times, regardless of how long your journey is. Everybody's on a different journey, and... You know, whether you make a million dollars or you make ten dollars, it's it's all relative, and you just have to focus on your journey and put your head down and stick with it. Yeah. Well done, guys. I'm yes. proud of you. Good stuff, Thank you. man. Thank you. Well done. Good, 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 good. Wow. Who were your biggest cheerleaders outside the two of you? So my mom and stepdad are actually here with us. They were a huge support through the whole thing. Um, they've been listening to you forever. My brother and sister-in-law, they were kind of our go-to for calling and what should we do here? Um, yeah, go ahead with friends. My, my parents also were big cheerleaders and then uh, really my whole family, but our friends Chris and Kendra that walked us through it and Kendra actually led our FBU class and then our friends Tori and Oh, you Shauna. went through Financial Peace University? We did. We we did. Okay. Yep. At yep. nine months pregnant, yeah. we went through oh, yeah. Wow. So. Okay. Yep. And then That's our friends. That's commitment right there. Yeah. It is. And a very generous we. We were nine months pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We were. Yes, I was just along for the ride. There you go. Uh, <laughs> and our friends Tori and Shauna gave us uh, gave us your book to get us started and so they, they were there alongside of us the whole way. Yep. Very cool. Well, way to go, heroes. Thank you. God, how's it feel to be free? Amazing. So good. Yeah, good for so you. So good. Well, we got a copy of The Legacy Journey for you. That's definitely the uh, next uh, chapter in your story, without a doubt. You can bring and, little Bailey uh, up here. Gonna bring yeah. Bailey into the shot here. we got to have the, the proper why oh in the in the picture. This is a beautiful why. Look at her. Wow. I love it. She's cute as a button. <laughs> we have Bailey, and we have number two on the way. All so right. a whole other reason. <laughs> Yay. I love it. Congratulations. We've also got an extra copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away to somebody. Pay it forward and keep this stuff rolling. Let's keep getting people, keep getting America out of debt so they can be wealthy. So proud of you guys. Well, well done. All right, Craig, Rachel, and Bailey. Lansing, Michigan, 55000 paid off in 23 months. And had a baby. Look at that girl. My Making goodness. Fifty to seventy thousand. <laughs> Count it down. Let's hear a debt free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. We're debt free. Yeah. I love it. Congratulations, you guys. Very, very well done. That's impressive. Ah, oh, that's eight. Hey. I don't want to blow by the math on this. They f rice and beans to this one. Yeah, I mean that that was uh, a rough ride. That's a tight turnaround, man. <laughs> and um, and they you know they did some of it. They're piling up cash while she's pregnant, which yes. you're supposed to do while pushing pause, yeah. and then throw it on the debt, push play when the baby comes home, mama's okay. Rock on through this, grind through it, push it through. Uh, both of our debt-free screams on this particular day have been modest incomes and amazing amounts of debt, which means amazing amounts of sacrifice. But they did have a 1986 lawnmower to, ah. to help to help ease the pain, right? I'm just saying that lawnmower, <laughs> that, that's a manly lawnmower. That's right incredible. There. This is the Ramsey Show.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. John is with us in Cincinnati. Hey, John, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? I've got a capital gains question. Um, My wife and I are preparing to sell our home. We didn't want to reinvest right away in another home. We kind of wanted to do a little bit of traveling first. Is is there a time frame that we have to work within? You're over 40, aren't you? No, I'm definitely over 40. <laughs> yeah, that's an old law. That law hadn't been on the books in a long time. The law for the last 20 years or so has been um, that your personal residence when you sell it if you've owned it more than two years has zero taxes on the first five hundred thousand dollars of gain if you're married filing jointly are you going to have a gain greater than a half million dollars no it, it will be under that then there'll be zero taxes regardless of what you do with the money or when you reinvest you don't have any limitation awesome. at all that is perfect i i really appreciate it now, verify that with your tax professional but you'll find i'm right <laughs> it's one of the few tax laws that I actually do know and understand. Most of them I don't. I'm horrible at tax. When did that change? It's probably about 20 years ago. Well, it used I'd, to be you had two years to buy another house. I thought that same thing. And you rolled it thing. back in. And, but you're, you're over 40. Yeah, I bought my first house 20 years ago. Wow. <laughs> That's so new. Yeah, I mean, that was the law of the forever. And yeah. that was a big change because now your home largely grows tax-free. tax-free. I mean, if you sell it after you owned it a couple of years, you don't have any taxes on the first half million married filing jointly, first quarter million as a single. And uh, so, like one of our good friends sold his house not long ago, made like 160 grand on it. Mm-hmm. A guy that was working here a little while back, and he'd owned it um, like two years in a day, and mm-hmm. paid zero taxes. So conceivably, you could sell your house every couple of years and continue to move up. And I guess yeah. once you didn't don't that get would, that gap, that would though. assume you're not married. because moving every two years would cause other issues Uh, at least at my house it would d is with us d's in detroit michigan hi d how are you i'm doing great how about yourself better than i deserve how can we help okay um i am retired i'm a widow and i'm debt free um, and my problem is that my house needs some updates and repairs. I've been getting estimates. The estimates uh, seem like everything is uh, three, four, five times what I expected to pay. Um, and what I'm looking at is I'm looking at getting a line of credit to do the repairs and, and the labor sa- labor saving updates because I'm 63 versus um, using my savings. But I, I wasn't going to go beyond what I have to, you know, that I, what I, if I was going to pay cash for. Mm-hmm. So I, I, what I wanted, I just wanted to get some advice from you. Um, do you think that's a good idea? Uh, do you advise something else or, or what? But, I, you know, the house needs to be updated. How, how much in repairs is the total? Mm, probably about fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. And how much money do you have in your total world? Well, I've got more than $60,000. How much money do you have in your total world? In my total world, I have 500000 Okay. D, you have done a really good job. Fix okay. your house with your money. Mm-hmm. Use money and fix your house. Don't use debt and fix your house. Not a line of credit? Nope. Why would I put you back in debt? You're my friend. Well, because I'd rather have my money working for me. It's not working for you. You're paying the bank. You're paying the bank. Well, okay, we'll see. There's another caveat. Uh, problem is um, I always have to pay taxes every year. And if I took a line of credit, let, let me, I, was, uh, I was thinking that that would help reduce. If you want to you you do that, you, all you have to do is give more to your church. Pardon me? You give more to your church, you'll have the exact same mathematical effect. You don't have to go in debt. If you want to you lower your tax bill, increase your charitable giving. Well, I've been doing that. Well, it's the same thing. Listen, if you give the bank $10,000, which you're not going to, if you give the bank $1,000 in interest, okay, Mm -hmm. you know what it saves you in taxes? No. $200. Really? 
Yep. Mm -hmm. Tax deduction is not a tax credit. It's a deduction. And so it reduces your income that is taxable by $1,000 as applied to your tax rate. And in your situation, the way you're, the way you're structured and the way your life's set up, you probably have an effective tax rate of around 20%. Maybe it's 30%, but it saves you two to $300. The other $700 is just burned. You didn't make 1000 by giving them 1000 So you gave them 1000 to set to not give the government 200 I don't want you doing that. If you want to do that, give your church an extra 1000 That way you don't have to give the government 200 and you don't even have to be in debt to do that one. Okay. Um, is there a way that I, if somebody told me that if I, inc- if I incorporate. Hey, D, you're listening I, to a lot if, of stupid people. Tax, <laughs> yeah. Who are your friends, I don't know D? who's in your ear, but they're dumber than a rock. I don't know who this is. You don't need to incorporate. You're a 64-year-old widow trying to fix her house. You got five hundred thousand. You have five hundred thousand dollars. Fix your freaking house. Just fix it, With and this. then don't have any nightmares. And if you want to turn a thousand dollars into a two hundred dollar tax deduction, just increase your charitable giving by that. You don't have to be in debt for that. It's the exact same ratio. Here's a promise I'll make you, D. If you mail a thousand dollars to Ramsey Solutions here in Nashville, I will mail you two hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a personal promise. That's if you really want to make that it, trade, John Deloney has a system I, to do it. I, I will. In fact, this isn't just for you, D. This is for anyone in America. A thousand dollars to the Ramsey Solutions Building, and I'll, you're going to get me arrested. I will Deloney. personally mail you two hundred dollars cash. Ramsey sets up pyramid scheme. John Deloney at the tip. I'm I'm happy to. All day. <laughs> this crap is going to get. This is not going to go well. <laughs> Some liberal left-wing newspaper is going to think you're serious because <laughs> they can't do math either. <laughs> oh, God. D, you won life. Don't pay a bank three it, or four or five good, percent. God, no. And call yourself sophisticated. No. Yeah, don't. You're not sophisticated. That's just stupid. In fact, don't call, the, borrow money. call the contractor in and say, I have $40,000 in cash. Yeah. And yeah. this $60,000 is, is not an – it's – it's yeah, real money. I got forty grand. I'm gonna hand it to you in, in cash. I want this work done in my after house. After it's done. A- after, of course. <laughs> yeah, and they're gonna yeah. line up in front of your house. Yeah, yeah. Well, not these days, but yeah, it's there's a lot of people. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but it's a labor shortage because of the government. But anyway, yeah, it's uh, D. Don't go in debt, honey. Please don't go in debt. You have the money. You've earned it. You win at life. You did a good job. Pay cash for your home repairs. The other interesting thing is, in addition to all of this uh, stuff, is that when you spend the $40,000 in cash or $50,000, two things will occur. One, John is correct. You'll get better deals. Uh, And the reason is, number two, you're more careful. It is interesting to me that when all of us, when we spend $100 bills out of our checking account, we are more careful with those than we are with borrowed money. Mm -hmm. So I had a I had a buddy uh, back when I was in college, and he worked with some home builders, and he said I could always tell the millionaires versus the middle class people buying in this building in this neighborhood. He said it was the millionaires who came in with the newspaper flyer, and they said, "Uh, uh-uh. uh, I said I wanted this sink because it was on sale at this place at this time, and y'all put in that sink." Versus the middle class buyer that came in and said, "We don't know. What do you think?" And it was this attention to detail and this attention to yeah, the dollars it's real and money. it's real money it's versus some money. big loan. That's right. It's That's not, right. And, and folks, never never do something for the tax deduction. You're trading a, you're trading a dollar for a quarter. Where does that come from? Uh, I hear that all the it time. It comes from the real estate business. Okay. We used to teach people, oh, it's smart to be in debt because you get a tax deduction. <laughs> I did that crap, actually, when I was 18 and stupid. I got my real estate license. You need the tax deduction. Get a bigger loan. Yeah. Trade a dollar for a quarter. Matter of fact, trade a hundred dollars for twenty-five. It's even a better deal. Uh, you don't want to go pay off your home. You'll lose the tax deduction. Yeah. It's one of the things we address in FPU. Yes, absolutely. This is the Ramsey Show. Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for The Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt-free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story.
This is The Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, broadcasting from the Dollar Car Rental Studios, it's The Ramsey Show. Where debt is done, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today as we talk about your life, and he's pretty good at that. Your money, and I'm pretty good at that. We'll work on it together and make sure we help you out. That's what we're here for. We are here to give you advice to help your life better. It's free, and some say the call is worth exactly what you pay for it. The phone number is 888 825 Two two five. Dave is with us in Santa Maria, California. Hi, Dave. How are you? Hi, I'm fine, Dave. And John, thank you for taking my call. Sure. I'm seventy five. My wife is seventy four. My home is paid off. Uh, we're six hundred thousand. We have six hundred thousand in savings and, and investments. Uh, we've been debt free for fifteen years. We just purchased a half ton pickup to take our RV and travel around the country. And in closing the RV. The finance manager wanted to put a $2,500 extra fee on top of a, for a extended warranty. I said no. And then my wife and the finance manager both were on my case because I wasn't going to spend $2,500 for that extended warranty. In three days, the wife loves me, uh, but she still kind of has a no sound joint every now and then making a comment about we should have got the warranty. I said, I don't feel like it, honey. We got the truck. Let's move on. Uh, kind of like oh, you did not home. buy it? Huh? You did not buy the warranty? No, I didn't. You stood your yeah, ground yeah, against the finance manager and your wife. Way to go, Dave! Woo, 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 woo! So, you win the argument. my house. <laughs> yeah, you win the come argument. my house. Tell my wife. <laughs> yeah, well, you win the come argument. Let me, let me tell you what to tell your wife, okay? Extended okay. warranties are a freaking scam. The finance manager would have made more money on selling you that warranty than selling you that truck. Okay, here's the numbers. Fifty okay. percent of that twenty five hundred was going in that dealership's pocket as a commission. Now let's back up a second, and you and I open up an extended warranty company for a second. Okay, you want to go with me on this trip? Let's pretend oh, we're going to sure. open an extended warranty. And was this on the F one fifty or on the RV? F one fifty. Okay, so what we would do if we were going to sell extended warranties on an F one fifty, which by the way is a fine freaking truck. Okay. But let's just say we wanted to do that. And we would study the F-150s and we would say, okay, out of a 1,000 of them, the items that we're going to cover with the warranty break 14 times on this one and 18 times on this one and 26 times on this one. And so our cost per 1,000 F-150s is X of actual repairs. Does that make sense? Okay. If we're going to open a warranty company, we got our cost of doing business is fixing the truck, right? Right. And we've got really good mathematical data on the probability of that actually occurring and what each car costs on average to cover. You want to know what that number is? It's 12% of the 2500 In other words, out of $2,500, about 280 bucks is the actual estimated repairs of the average F-150 during the warranty coverage. Yeah, well, where's the rest of the money going? Well, I already told you, 50-plus percent goes to commissions, and the rest of it goes to profit for the warranty company and or overhead for the warranty company. So you would have paid $2,500 to actually get about $280 worth of coverage, which you should self-insure through. You have $600,000 freaking dollars. You are a genius. You smelled a rat, and you stood up for your rights. You win. Your wife was looking for peace of mind. Let me tell you where peace of mind comes from. Six hundred grand in the bank, not a warranty. Rock star. Well done, Dave. You get to tell her you won the argument. But be very careful how you well, tell her that. He's been married a while. He yeah, knows how to do this. Yeah. I don't win the argument. I don't win my wife. So there you go. Uh, it's not a matter of loving your wife. I love my wife, and she's wrong sometimes. 
<laughs> Did you tell her that? <laughs> no, not like that. I don't. I said I just said how long I've been married thirty nine years. I'm gonna tell her gently, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna also say you were right. We should have got the warranty because the warranty is stupid. They're scams. Extended warranties are awful. Never buy them, people. Man, I. I I hope both of my new Dave friends are married this time next week. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be great. Yeah, well, no, no I mean, you no, got to. No, I know you messed with you got, you got to you gotta couch how you cover of, it. Of course, all, of course, all of course. Services, okay? Yeah. We don't want to go in and go, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, You've that, been married hey, 39 years. That's hard, though, when you're in the dealership. The guys, the dealers the leaving guy on was here. having a cow. You know why? It's 1250 bucks out of his pocket. Well, then he, he, he did what every salesman wants to do. He got the wife involved. Oh, yeah. What a scumbag. Yeah, he thought he had him. What a scumbag. Man, thought he had him. But let me tell you, you get 600 you know how you get six hundred grand at retirement by not doing stupid by stuff not like doing that. Stupid, <laughs> by not, smelling a rat like that. Oh man! So I went into an appliance store one time with Sharon. We had to have a new washer and dryer, and um, I thought the guy had recognized me the way he was talking. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a it's a part of my world. Sometimes I get course, recognized, so. sometimes I don't, and it's okay either way. I'm not. It's not like ego. But the way he was carrying on, I thought he. Knew who we were. So anyway, I just, so we're like, I, I want to get, have you got one with a dent in it? And, you know, ha ha, I want to get a deal. No, I don't. Okay, okay. Well, we'll take that one. And he goes, well, you need to get the extended warranty on it. And I started laughing because I thought he knew, like, who I was. He knew I stood how I stood on it. And he's like, no, 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 really, you need to get this. And I'm like, no, 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 I really don't. Then I start to realize he doesn't know who I am and he has no idea. He's just trying to sell me an extended warranty. I'm like, no, dude, I don't, I don't buy extended warranties. And then the guy goes, Dave Ramsey does. Oh, and I'm like, what? Yes. And he goes, yeah, Dave Ramsey comes in here and buys stuff all the time, and he always puts an extended warranty on it. <laughs> <laughs> I would have paid money to see your and Sharon's face right there. Just I'm looking at my wife, and she looks at me, and I said, well, I have it on good authority that Dave Ramsey does not come <laughs> into this store. I am positive and buy extended warranties. And he goes, oh, yeah. I mean, he bows up. So I hand him my real, I, I, pull up, <laughs> I pull out my driver's license and I hand it to him. And he goes, oh, bleep. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. And starts backpedaling. Oh, Mr. Ramsey, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I said, listen, dude. I said, Sharon, we need to leave because I'm really angry right now. Uh -huh. And this man is using our name inappropriately. And I'm afraid I'm going to say something that that will be a true Dave Ramsey story <laughs> that he can use later. And we need to leave quickly. Oh, we'll do something. We'll fix you up, man. It's no problem, no problem, no problem. And so we left. Yeah. And we went to Lowe's and bought him at Lowe's. Yep. And um, the next day, the manager of the store called the office and, and said, can you come over here? And I went over. I said, sure. I went over there. And he goes, man, we looked it up. We've got a Dave Ramsey on file, but he lives in another city nearby huh. that does have extended warranties. And we've been telling everybody it was you, and we were wrong. And we've sent an email to all the stores telling people not to do that anymore. Please don't talk about us on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like the fact that when he said, would you come by? Because I would have said, no, man, I got stuff to do. I like that you said, yeah, I'll be right over. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was, I was having too much fun That's by now. That's gangster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, yeah, I got to see what this is. And I went in and bought stuff from that other guy many times after that. I bought several things from him. Yeah, that was my, a good My move. new friend. That was a good move. He's my new friend. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Chef. What makes our show unique is that we genuinely care about our listeners. We're intentional about choosing the best advertisers to recommend. Blinds.com is no exception. They offer high quality window treatments at unbelievable prices, and they make it simple to shop blinds, shades, and interior shutters with easy online ordering, free shipping, and a guaranteed perfect fit. Go to blinds.com and take advantage of this week's special savings.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Do you feel like you're constantly running, but nothing you do ever moves the needle in your money, in your life? That's normal for most people. Normal's frustrating, exhausting. Normal sucks. But you can live the life you want. You don't have to be normal. You could be debt free. You could actually have breathing room with your schedule and your money. But that does not happen accidentally. It takes a game plan. And that's what we want to give you. We want to give you a game plan. We're doing a game plan live stream tomorrow night, Tuesday, September the 28th. Dave Ramsey, me, Christy Wright, and George Camel will help you set a foundation that makes your goals possible. Christy's going to talk from her book, uh, number one bestseller, Take Back Your Time. And uh, George is going to be talking about goals, and I'm going to walk you through some money stuff. We're going to give you a game plan. Oh, did I mention it's free? It's a free live stream, a full-on Ramsey live event, completely free. Don't be normal. you got to get new information if you want new results. Get the plan that gives you, that gets you where you want to be. To register for a game plan live, text game plan to 33789. You want to watch this tomorrow night? Text game plan. All one word to 33789. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. <clears throat> Travis is in Fort Worth. Hi, Travis. How are you? I'm doing all right. How about you all? Better than we deserve, brother. How can we help? Well, um, my wife and I uh, both have kind of newer cars. Um, I paid mine off uh, last, about probably six months ago, and... She still has about sixty five hundred. Um, we would have had everything paid off, but we ended up both of us had a baby uh, last February, and um, we don't we haven't done any payments on it in a while because we've done so many payments on there. And I was wanting to know if we should sell my vehicle to pay the rest of hers off, and then have probably about. 15000 to 20000 left over to throw on other stuff. Are you out of debt except that? Uh, yes. So my wife just has the 6500 that she owes left on, on the 2019 uh, terrain, and I got a 2017 Camaro. I know, but you don't have any other debt anywhere. Student loan no. debt, medical debt, credit card debt. No. We already paid all the hospital bills and everything. Okay, so the only debt in your entire world is six thousand five hundred dollars. Yep. Okay, and what's your household income? Um, it's about fifty to sixty thousand. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you guys are what twenty four? Um, we're, she just turned twenty eight. I'm twenty seven. I'll be twenty eight next month. And you said you both had a baby. I'm assuming it's the same kid. Yes. Okay. You said that kind of funny. I thought, whoa. Oh, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, we had a new child. We yeah, had a new so, child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we, we. Okay. All we, right. We, we. <laughs> yeah. So what What I, uh, all I want you to do is I want you to get on a written budget with our every dollar app. It's free to use. Matter of fact, okay. I'll put you guys through Financial Peace University and we'll okay. pay for it. I'll pay for it. And we'll sign you up to Ramsey Plus membership, which will get you into Financial Peace University. It'll also get you on the Every Dollar app premium. And the two of you, you and your wife, sit down. Now, that gift is a $100 gift. If I give that to you, you have to promise me you'll use it, okay? Oh, yeah, we've we done it before, but we'll do it again. Okay. Um, well, I know you're not on a budget because you can't tell me how much you make. So I know you're not doing oh, yeah. a written budget every month. Well, yeah, the reason why I'm saying I was kind of giving an estimate because my wife just started a new job, and I kind of added the numbers before then. Okay. Yeah, but, I, but your I monthly income needs to be, and... every dollar of your monthly income needs to be allocated to this, and I want you to roll up your sleeves. Do you have any money saved other than $1,000? Um, we got about probably $3,000 right now because she was not working for six months. But she's and working now. Used our mer- Yes. Okay. You both have a paycheck now. You pay all your bills now. Take two of the three, put it on the debt. That leaves you 4500 You get your $1,000 baby step one. Now we attack that baby step two debt like it's a debt, like it's a, like, you're like a gazelle running from a cheetah. You remember. And you knock it out as fast as you can, and you keep her car. Yeah, you don't, there, there's no reason to sell your car. 
Uh, you can you can keep both of them. You need to get them paid off, and then you need to build up your emergency fund of three to six months of expenses with a new baby in the house, and that is the process. It's funny how uh, the first baby, especially, uh, changes the landscape of the brain. Right. Well, and he mentioned one thing that I might consider, which is he may be walking out to that driveway and looking at a Camaro that can't fit a car seat or something, oh. and he wants it to be. It might make him feel noble to sell the car for his wife, but it may also be that's an impractical fit. It, it was cool when you were a high school yeah. kid or you're older now or yeah. something, but maybe I mean, not. If you need to sell the car for other reasons, there's right. nothing wrong with that. Right. But you don't have to sell it to get out of debt. No, you make enough money. Pay off the car. The math The math works. That's right. But yeah, you, it may be time to uh, move to a family car <laughs> at this stage of the game. I had a Camaro before our kids were born. Yeah. Um, I bought Sharon a new Camaro for Christmas before our first child was born. And then I drove it and totaled it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the, the most newlywed gift when you get your wife something that you really want. Yeah, it's like, like, like honey, a kid, I got us a bass boat and a shotgun. It's like a kid <laughs> buying a Tonka truck for his mother for Mother's Day. Yeah, <laughs> It's like the same thing. It was a Berlinetta Camaro. T-tops. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. I totaled so that is puppy. It, so this is a... Comp- We've just, I'm just going to derail the show for a second. Okay. Is a Corvette a upgraded Camaro? Or are they different cars? <laughs> well, they're both Chevy, and the Corvette's more expensive than the Camaro. But so it seems like the Camaro They're not is, the same model. I mean, they're no, different cars. No, but... Yeah. It, uh, you know. Is it like a Chevy guy can max out at a, at a Corvette after he had a Camaro? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I've got one. Yeah. Okay. So I guess, and it's not totaled. <laughs> It's not total to my knowledge. Just sitting in the parking lot. You didn't buy it for Sharon. No, I bought that one for me. For her birthday. (laughs) Straight up. There's no. I'm 39 years married. I'm way past. I would have loved to see her face. Like, thanks, David. Yeah, it had a had a red bow on it. I mean, come on, it's like a Lexus commercial. (laughs) Except it was a Camaro. It was a Camaro. (laughs) Tricked out like I wanted. Exactly. Man, what a loving Thanks, guy. Dave. What a loving guy. You're a great husband. <laughs> wow. Jeez. I, I, this is just too much therapy on the air. <laughs> Greg is in Phoenix. Hey, Greg, how are you? I'm doing pretty well. Good. How can we help? Well, I just paid off the last of my debts with the exception of my mortgage. Whoop, whoop. Um, my effective, yeah, right? Uh, my effective increase in income now is $1,500. But I have not been saving for my two kids' college since they were born uh, seven and eight years ago. And I have no idea where I should be at and how much I should be allocating towards that, you know, per month once I get caught up to where I should be at. It's a great question. At the current rate of tuition increase, you're probably going to want to have about $3.9 million. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> that should get both of them through, give or take. One year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At a private school. Yeah. Now, the um, uh, uh, it depends on where you want to send them to school, obviously, but you can get projections on state schools. In state schools, you can get projections on private Private is running about 4x to 5x of what state schools are running right now, um, and sure. that's probably going to be true in the future, um, I'm guessing. I don't know what's going to happen to poor higher ed. But um, now we tell folks after you're out of debt, you have an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. That's baby step three. Oh, baby step well, four is 15% well, of your well income going into one. retirement. Okay. You're, you're well past that one, you said? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm set at that as well. Okay. Then 15% of your income going into retirement is four. Baby step five is kids' college. Money left over past that is baby step six. Click Smartvestor Pro at RamseySolutions.com. Sit down with one of the people we recommend for invest, investing advice, and they'll give you some exact numbers and help you dial in what you need to be saving for the kiddos' college. You're a good dad to take care of this. You're being a, a grown-up with a good execution on a good financial plan. Well, Well done, sir.
Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Grant is with us in Phoenix. Hi, Grant. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. Thank you for having me on. Sure. What's up? Hey there. Um, so my question is, I, I own three homes right now, uh, two of them which I own outright. And the market out here in Phoenix is kind of crazy. And I wanted to know if you think it'd be worth selling them and hanging on to the cash for a little while and reinvesting later or taking that money and putting it towards what I owe on the home I live in right now. If you sold both of them, would the home you're in be paid off? It would. And how much would you have left over? Uh, none. Okay. All right. So. Um, I owe about four ninety on the home I'm in right now, mm-hmm. and I could sell both of my homes for you know right around that. What's your household cash. income? Uh, I make about two hundred thousand. My girlfriend makes about sixty. Okay. All right. So your household income is two hundred because your girlfriend is your girlfriend. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Two hundred. Uh, the uh, uh, how old are you? I'm thirty one. You're doing really good, man. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Well done. Appreciate it. Um, this is going to feel extreme, but it's what I have done, and it has worked out. Okay? i preface it with that. I, I would sell them, and I would pay off my house. And then I would use, up the, fa- use the fact that you make $200,000 a year, and you have zero debt of any kind, and you're 31 years old to pile up a pile of cash, and by the time you do that, this market will have calmed down, and then buy an investment property with cash. And then when that one is sitting there with cash, and you don't have a house payment, and you have rent coming in, and you make $200,000 a year, you can pile up money to buy the second rental property with cash even quicker. And then when those two are paying rent, and there's no payments, and you don't have any payments on your house, and you make $200,000 a year, you can pile up the cash to buy the third one even quicker. And that's how I started buying real estate the second time, and I've not been forced to sell any of it ever again, and I'm not at any financial stress ever again by doing that. It's a little slower, but it's a little sh- little more sure, and 20 years from now, you'll be ahead of the guy who leverages into them. Right. And uh, honestly, I probably over-purchased on the home I'm living in. Um, but I did that based on the rent I was receiving from both homes that are paid off in, in attempts to cover my mortgage. But um, that's, yeah. that's my biggest payment I have to worry yeah. about every month. And the, the thing is, you make a lot of money. And, uh, you know, you got somebody special in your life. So you're, you may even be making more money if you were to marry. And uh, so, you know, you've got a, nothing but upside on this. And you'll be a you'll be a surprise that how quickly you can save up and pay cash. Now, rule number one when you're buying investment real estate is you do not pay full price. Okay, so when you have a pile of when you have when you have two hundred thousand dollars saved that it took you four years to save or three years to save after your home's paid off, you you use that to buy a two hundred fifty or three hundred thousand dollar appraised house, not a two hundred thousand dollar house. You get a deal when you have that kind of cash, and you wait until you can find a deal. There are no deals in this current marketplace, hardly. I mean, very, very hard to find a deal right now, because any old thing will sell quickly and for too much money right this second. Um, And so it's a good time to be getting out of the market. It's a horrible time to get into the market. And I'm not necessarily, I don't really care if the market's hot or not. I just don't want it to be so hot that there's zero deals, because I'm always looking for a deal. We don't buy real estate right. at full price at Ramsey. That's not an investor. That's what investors should never do that. So I want to turn you into a cash investor that's looking for a bargain, and you wait until you get a bargain, and you're a cash investor until you're that's looking for a bargain, and you wait until you get a bargain, and you're a cash investor that's looking for a, you get the pattern here. There's a pattern to this, and dude, it's going to set you free. It's going to put you in a whole different place now. Very unpopular with the I borrow money for everything crowd, but I'm from the I don't borrow money for anything crowd, and that's who you called. (laughs) So I think we could do the math, Dave, and let's say like we're here in Nashville and people are over, I don't say overpaying, but the list price is X and they're paying 25 or 50 higher than that. And let's say you buy that house and it corrects down 50, saving money for six months 
the math works out in your favor, even though not. Yeah, I don't, I don't so know that the market is going to correct down. Okay, but I think, that's, I think all that's going to be is just there's going to be a, a little less shooting up. Okay, and it's and the frenzy is going to come off of it. Okay, and when the frenzy comes off, when supply catches up with demand, right. then when somebody's you know when people aren't running up to the front door and nailing offers to the front door, mm-hmm. you know, uh, like it's just it's crazy. When that stops, then there's actually a foreclosure that can be bought out of the deal. There there's a, a bank. Uh, owned real estate that can be bought at a deal there's other stuff you can find you know estate plant house you know two sisters own a house they live in chicago the house is in nashville it's been sitting there on the market for a while they don't want it they never wanted it in the first place they just got stuck with it or airbnb get a deal. Rates or whatever yeah whatever it is you get yeah. a deal whatever yeah. the cause of someone becoming a motivated seller but in a market where there's seven buyers for every house that goes on the market 20 minutes after it goes on the market that no one has to take a deal but and what i'm saying is after a let's say a year, the frenzy levels off. You're holding cash here. You didn't lose no, by not having no. a rental property. No. You actually did okay. Yeah. By just piling because up cash. again, you're going to use the two hundred thousand dollars cash to buy a three hundred thousand dollars house. That's right. Or a two hundred sixty thousand dollars house, or whatever it is. And so you make your money back on the deal. Right. The fact that you're buying at a bargain in a marketplace where margin, bargains might exist in a marketplace like we're in today they don't exist that's right just because of the simple the the frenzy the yeah. frenzy took all the foreclosures out of the market but you can feel like you're losing right now and you're not yeah, yeah that that's a good that's a good clarification and you're not you're not richard's in pensacola florida hi richard how are you hey dave what's up uh first i want to thank you so much for all your great advice over the years uh, you've been like a little angel on my shoulder, the voice of reason. Bless your and, heart. Um, Man, what's your devil shoulder? Good. What's the devil on the other shoulder like? <laughs> uh, the, the devil's my wife on the other Whoa! side. Who doesn't understand? Whoa! She doesn't under, she, so you're she doesn't gonna understand to, budgeting. In it, you're going to need to call all. my show after you get off this call. What's up, man? <laughs> Why can we help? I, 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 love, I love her 33 years. Uh, anyway, quickly, I'm 66 years old. My wife is 56 years old. I have two beautiful, successful daughters. We're debt free. Um, I've got about 75 K in a Roth and I've got about 50,000 in cash. And my two daughters, the, uh, the house that we live in is worth about 400,000 and they don't need the inheritance and they're not interested in, they don't want the house. And I probably know your answer, but is a reverse a reverse mortgage ever a good idea? No. Dang. Yeah. The uh, the interest rates are higher and the default rate is higher because these things are a dead gum mess. I mean, when washed up movie stars are pitching them on TV right next to walk in bathtubs and snuggies, you know it's not a good deal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to buy a motorhome, and me and my wife want to travel around the country. Well, if you want to move down yeah, in the house, I'm okay with that. Yeah. Gosh, she doesn't want to move. She loves this old house. Yeah. We just did it. We just moved yeah. in, into half the house. We're doing it this week, as a matter of fact. We sold our house. We're moving into half the house. Now, we use some of the money to buy another vacation house, and you could use some of the money to buy a motorhome be the same thing. Mm-hmm. So if you moved into a $300,000 house and bought a $50,000 motorhome, you know, that would have been an okay move. But yeah, I, don't, I, mean, I, I would I, do that, but I don't see one. Yeah, well, she doesn't have to. I mean, you can rent a motorhome, too. You don't have to buy one. Yeah. They go down in value yeah, horribly. Yeah, so. They're horrible. Yeah. Horrible. Well, we, that's what, we rent boats. We don't buy boats. We rent them when we want to use one. Well, that's not, it's not a bad thing, because they go down in value like crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, reverse mortgage is a really bad, bad product. And I would stay completely away from it under any circumstances. It just has a mess. The average default rate with typical mortgages is 3%. The average default rate among reverse mortgages is 18%. That gives you a hint right there how bad these things are. This is The Ramsey Show.
Our scripture of the day, 1 Peter 4.10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as a faithful steward of God's grace in its various forms. Edmund Burke said, nobody made a greater mistake than he who did nothing because he could do only a little. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Darcy's with us in Houston, Texas. Hey, Darcy, how are you? All right. How are you guys doing today? Great. How's it going? Oh, joy. <laughs> so what's up? How can we help? Uh, well, basically, I just need some guidance, some uh, real guidance. And I've done a Financial Peace University a very, very long time ago, so... Uh, and I, what was it? I tried it, failed it, tried it again, failed it, kept going back and forth, and now I'm back around to it again. Um, I'm now at a position where I have, I'm a disabled vet and I work full time, so I'm receiving money. I'm receiving like two incomes. I'm a single parent. I'm trying to basically just figure out what to do. I have a kid that's going to college in a couple of years, and I have nothing. I have. I have nothing for him, but fortunately, because I was a vet, I still have, um, he'll be able to go to school in state for free. Um, Why did you fail FPU? Course. You said you took it uh, several times. Why'd you fail it? Uh, because I couldn't, uh, I wasn't working uh, when I couldn't, um, due to part of the things going on with my disability or whatever, I was unable to work. And I wasn't what is receiving. the nature of your disability, honey? Uh, it, it was physical, physical and mental. Okay. So at one point I wasn't able to work, but now I am working a full-time job and I'm able to, uh, and I'm able to do, uh, I'm able to do this day by day. And I also hopefully here, hopefully I'm also looking for another job, mm -hmm. uh, within the system to yeah. pay more money. So what do you make and, off a of disability? Uh, disability, it, it'll be at 40, mm -hmm. uh, at 40,000. Mm -hmm. And what do you make on your other job? On my job, uh, after taxes and everything, it'll be 31. And I just did and, that. Uh, how many kids have you got? Two. And how old are they? 16, 14. Okay. All right. You did not fail FPU because you lost your job. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Mm -hmm. You failed FPU because you lost your focus, and that might okay. be true because of some of the mental things you're facing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, or it I could agree be, with that. or it could be. It was more like me. I was just lazy. <laughs> 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 I don't know. You got to decide that. I'm not going to put yeah. it on you. You got to decide. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, thank you for your service, by the way. But uh -huh. you can do Financial Peace University making 40000 a year, and you didn't stop getting that disability when you lost Oh, no, I wasn't. What, no, 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 no. I, I wasn't making anywhere near that at that mm -hmm. time. Gotcha. At nowhere near you that were making, at that You time. got your disability income, didn't you? Yeah, yeah but it, That's what I'm talking it about. was. Yeah, no, no, no. It Not wasn't. Later. But it wasn't. But it wasn't that high. It wasn't oh, that high. Oh, the disability listed, income yeah. has been adjusted. Yes, it has it has increased How old within are you? this last uh I'm, ooh, hold on. I lie about that number a lot. So wait a minute. <laughs> Care to What's the real number? I I I, I think I'm forty four. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So are you are you here's the question that every person's got to ultimately decide. Mm hmm You've got a fourteen year old, a sixteen year old, and they're important. They're your why, but also you have to look in the mirror and decide I'm ready to change my life. Oh yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Like, like. Then one, listen. One, it, it, then your past I, doesn't matter. Yeah. All you can control is tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. And you've had some hard challenges and some ugly challenges. You've seen war. You've seen all kinds of mess. And here you are. And what you get to decide is what tomorrow is going to look like. Are you ready to change your life? Oh yeah, most definitely. Are you certain yeah. of it? Oh, most definitely. Most it's gonna, definitely. It's going to have to change the way you talk to yourself, the way you think about yourself, the way you champion yourself in those kids, the way you look at them and say, hey, we got free college in the state. We're going to we're going to run with it and you can breathe 
the way you start saving money, follow the baby steps, it's going to be a totally different way of talking to Darcy. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Of course, well, I you, am. You can't am. say people like me <laughs> don't nope. win. Yeah. You can't say that anymore. Because yeah. people like you now win because you are a different people. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that decision does. You Are to... you ready? I don't trust you yet. I don't either. <laughs> I am ready. I am ready. I Are you going to count the cost of what it's going to cost you? You may have to get new friends. You may have to tell your kids, hey, y'all got to get jobs. You make $71,000 a year now. And you're broke. Well, no, 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 no. Not now. Not now. Not now. I have I have almost 30000 in the bank right now. And how much debt do you have? Because, huh? And how much debt do you have? And that I don't know the answer to. Darcy, I just got. How much I debt you just, got? I, I don't. I, you know. Really. I, I what have, do you owe on that car you bought? Oh, you know what? I don't. I paid off my car already. I don't have any debt on that. Student loans? Uh, no student loans. Credit cards? I don't have any credit cards. Medical debt? Uh, medical debt? That's a different story. I have a son that's special needs. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, that that is from that other than and i'm still fighting with the insurance on that one but other than that what kind of debt have you got my house note okay other than those two uh, things what have you got and um i had a loan stupid me i had a loan and i'm like at 18 on that and i'm thinking about just double because i've been doubling up on my house because i was like well let me go ahead before that loan happened, let me double up on my house or whatever, and that's what I've been doing. So, Darcy, so listen, been... listen. Mm-hmm. You're creating chaos, and what you need yeah. is what you need is peace. You're trying okay. to double up over here, not pay over there, call insurance company over here, then triple up over here and go back and not pay that, and it just creates this chaos, this frenzy. And what Dave's trying to give you is whew, peace. Yeah. So here's what we're gonna do. You hold on. Kelly's gonna pick up. I'm going to sign you up for a fresh class of Financial Peace University. I'm going to pay for it as a part of a Ramsey Plus membership. And that's how you access Financial Peace University now. It also includes the Every Dollar Premium app. And Darcy, this time I want you to follow orders like you're in the military. And bring your boys along with you. This time I want you to do everything exactly like we tell you to do it. No variance. I want you to stick with it exactly because you never heard me one time back when you went through a PU tell you to pay double on your house while you're sitting on a stupid 18% loan. That's so discombobulated, kiddo. And you can do better than this. Um, Even with all the different things you got in your life, even with the different challenges. But you need a very, very clear path and a very clear line and you don't get off the line. You stay right on the line one foot in front of the other follow the recipe exactly and we'll make some great gumbo but if you don't if you go make up your own stuff don't expect it to turn out because that's what happened between the time you left financial peace university the first time and now is you never once applied the exact recipe Mm -hmm. and it would never have you pay an extra on your house would never have you dealing with that You don't know what's going on with these medical bills. You don't have a clear, organized, precise plan. And that precision is where your peace will come from. It requires some extra work, um, and you kind of sweat and have a little stress while you're doing it. But the end result is you are, are now on top of the numbers managing them. They're not managing you. And you get to choose your heart from this point forward. You want to live in chaos and payment to payment to payment to... Or do you want to work really hard for a couple of years and breathe and sleep? Choose your heart. That's the way it works. You can do it, kiddo. Hold on. Kelly will pick up. Good show, John. Dr. John Deloney, James Childs, Kelly in the booth. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Have a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life? Let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts.